Our guest is Noam Chomsky, who you've just been listening to. I'm Bob McChesney. This is Media Matters on WILL AM 580, coming to you today, April 25th, 2010, uh, from beautiful Urbana, Illinois. This is a pre-recorded show. We taped it a couple weeks before going on air, so please don't call in today. Sit back, relax, uh, enjoy the program. Uh, if not always the content of the program, given the nature of what we're talking about and the severity of it. Uh, Noam Chomsky, in your work uh, in the 70s and 80s in particular, you put a great deal of attention uh, on the news media as sort of being crucial to the propaganda system, the ideological system, making uh, making the system work effectively and efficiently. And your, your work uh, uh, on your own and with Ed Herman, uh, I think uh, educated a generation. Uh, I'm proud to say I'm one of that generation to how to understand news media and how, how they work. Uh, you haven't written as much about it in recent times. You've been focusing on other stuff. Do the news media still play such as an important function as they did in those days? Yeah, in fact, uh, I, I wouldn't say there's been any. In in this respect, they're fundamentally the same as when I was a kid, you know. 7, 80, 75 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there are big changes, like uh, you've talked about them, we don't have to go over them, but the fundamental point is the same, and they, uh, they're not that different from the general intellectual culture. It's a point, it, it's, we, we studied the media, I studied the media, mm-hmm. but that's because you can study them more uh, uh, analytically, like you can do a study of everything that appeared in the world press. To try to look at... Um, the general culture, you know, scholarship, journals, uh, uh, commentary, that's a much harder task. It's to do it systematically. But when you do it, I I don't think you find huge differences. I mean, there are other effects in the media, you know, the corporate structure and so on, but Mm -hmm. it's not missing in the universities either, you know. And uh, uh, so take today. I mean, there are two huge issues. I mean, they they dwarf anything else because they're issues of survival. Uh, one is nuclear weapons, the other is environmental destruction. And the media are doing a terrible job on both. They're not, I mean, if you really look carefully, you can find the data, but it's these issues are presented in such a way as to um, diminish the significance of uh, 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 things that are taking place and to divert attention away from uh, what really matters. I mean, take, take say, global warming. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, um, there's been a substantial business camp. Here's another case of internal contradiction. It's kind of interesting to look at. Um, the business world, the Chambers of Commerce, you know, American Petroleum Institute and so on, have uh, engaged in a huge propaganda campaign, which means the media, uh, to try to convince people that... Uh, uh, there's no human impact on if it's taking place at all, which maybe it isn't. There's no human impact. Uh, now the same CEOs who are running those campaigns, uh, they have the same views that you and I have. They know it's very serious. Uh, it's uh, it could be catastrophic. It's going to destroy what they own, you know. But nevertheless, they're kind of institutionally required to get people not to believe it. And there's a good reason for it. Uh, it's it's not a you know, it's, it's a quasi market system, you know. And in a market system, uh, you you have very few choices if you're in a management position. You must act to maximize short-term profit and gain, and you must dismiss what economists call externalities, effects on others. Well, in this case, the externality happens to be survival of the species. But when you're operating in this system, you can't pay attention to that. Uh, just as if uh, you'd say, you sell me a car, uh, we're supposed to make a deal that's good for us, but we don't talk about the effects on somebody mm-hmm. else. Well, in this case, the externalities happen to be rather significant, the fate of the species. Nevertheless, the same individual is compelled, really, just by institutional facts, to try to undermine belief in it. If this individual decides, I'm not going to do it, he'll be out and somebody else will be in because it's an institutional effect. Well, the effect of this is uh, concern over the environment has declined very sharply in the United States. Uh, By now, the last figures I saw, barely a third of the population thought that humans have anything to do with global warming. Uh, There was just a book that came out a little while ago by a 
Australian political economist, a very good one, called Requiem for the Species. This is what he's talking about. Now, how do the media handle this? Well, uh, if, you, if you look at the media, for example, the New York Times had a front page story a week or two ago on, in which they said, well, they're talking about the dissent over global warming. They said, well, the scientists say it's real, but then the meteorologists, the guys on the radio uh, who you know say it's going to rain tomorrow, uh, they say it's not real. So we have a real conflict <laughs> on I mean, the one hand. The scientists, on the other hand, a pretty face who says, you know, it's going to rain tomorrow because they read something mm-hmm. and they give it. Uh, well, that's the way it's been presented. I mean, on the one hand, you have you know, 99% of scientists. Uh, uh, on the other hand, you have uh, Rush Limbaugh and <laughs> Jim Inhofe and maybe two or three scientists they can pick up, and they get equal time. Well, that's bad enough, but it's much worse than that. Because when they talk about skeptics, global warming skeptics, they're talking about the people who deny it. But there's a much bigger and more significant group of global warming skeptics who aren't barely mentioned, namely the scientists who think that the uh, uh, estimates are much too conservative. Uh, They're far more important than Mm -hmm. Rush Limbaugh, but occasionally there'll be a word from them here scattered around. But it's framed as a debate between two parallel groups, you know, the kind of pointy-headed the liberal scientists and uh, uh, the common sense people who say there's nothing happening. Well, that is a requiem for the species. And for the business world, it makes sense in, the sh- ter- in, in terms of short-term profit market share, uh, even though they themselves know that they're destroying themselves and destroying the lives of the grandchildren. Uh, that's... Uh, it's what uh, Orwell called doublethink, you know, mm-hmm. the ability to have two ideas in mind which are contradictory and believe in both. <laughs> uh, and that's almost like a motto for the, for the, for the propaganda system. Mm-hmm. I mean, the people who are running the destructive propaganda know what they're doing. It's the same in the financial system. Mm-hmm. I mean, for, uh, the, uh, these guys are not stupid. They understand systemic risk. I mean, they know that if you enter into market transactions and you disregard the effects on others, which you must do or else you're out of the game, uh, you're disregarding what economists call systemic risk, the chance that if what you, you use your Goldman Sachs, you know, you sell crummy securities, you take out an insurance policy uh, uh, to save you when they collapse, that's what they did with AIG, it's a huge risk. So that's systemic risk, but you don't take it into account. And you really don't have to, because when the whole system collapses, the taxpayer comes in, thanks to the government, and bails you out, and you're richer than before. And that's what people are angry about. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, they're now setting themselves up for the next and probably bigger financial crisis, consciously. Well, you can read it in the business press. You know, say, well, it's, it's going to happen because uh, uh, we're disregarding <laughs> systemic risk and we have to. That's the way market systems work. I mean, theoretically, you could have a, you could, you could have regulation, government regulation, which could mm-hmm. overcome this. But in order for that to be, the, you can't really have that when the financial institutions run the government. Yeah. So, uh, there's a, and when they run, pretty much run the media and so on. So you can... Sort of, if, if you're careful, you can figure out what's going on. But it's uh, uh, the logic of the financial crisis and of the and the environmental crisis are rather similar. I mean, these are market inefficiencies, and you can only have, overcome them with a functioning democratic government. But since the democratic government is pretty much in the pocket of the people who are making the economic decisions, well, it's it's a bind. And in the case of the environment, it may mean destroying the species, you know, virtually destroying the species. The same is true of nuclear weapons. Yeah, 